What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be talking about how to interact with a SQL 2019 server database using Visual Basic. So I made a video previously on how to do this in C Sharp. So I will be referencing that a lot throughout this video. And if you have not yet watched that video, I would encourage you to do so as a lot of the code is gonna be reused in this video. So I'm not gonna explain it in as much detail as I did in that video. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so just like in many of my other videos, we'll start by firing up Visual Studio. So we will be creating a new project and it will be just like the previous project with the ASP.NET web application on the .NET framework, but it will be in Visual Basic, not in C Sharp. So first we want to change our language here with this Dropbox to Visual Basic. And then in the search bar, search for web application. And then you should see the ASP.NET web application .NET framework in Visual Basic. Uh, so then we'll click next and I'm going to name this pet db underscore client underscore vb and click create. This will be an empty project just like before. It's a bare bones, bare bones project generation, but Visual Studio will create the rest. All right, so now that we have our project, we will need to add the jQuery library just like we did in the last video. So we can do this by going to, I'm going to go to the petsdb underscore client project that I showed in the previous video and just copy the jQuery library from there. Once again, if you don't know how to get this library, please look at my video in the C sharp language of how to do this. So then I'm going to copy that and put it into my petsdb underscore vb project. So paste it here. And now we go to highlight the project, hover over add, and add the existing item. That is the jQuery 1.11.2.js library. Now we're ready to start coding. So we need to add a new item and it will be the web form. So we have a web form here and if it doesn't show up in your recents, typing in web form and I'm just going to leave it as the default name webform1.aspx and click add. So at this point we're ready to begin the coding. So I did notice one issue when I went to make this project, um, the web form, that ASPX, it doesn't have any drop down. You know how like uh, in the C sharp video, you could do a little drop here with the arrow and it should show a web form one.aspx.vb for our visual basic code that works behind the scenes. So that doesn't show up in Visual Studio for me for some odd reason. But it does, you know, the project does generate this file. So by clicking on File Explorer and navigating to your project's working directory, you will see the webform1.aspx.vb file. So if I just double click this, it opens with Visual Studio by default. And now you can see this webform1.aspx.vb file is open in my editor. So now we are ready to begin writing the Visual Basic code. So this is just a direct translation of the C Sharp code that I wrote in a previous video to Visual Basic code. So I'm actually just going to copy and paste the code into this file here. Um, I will explain a little bit about it, but basically, you know, Visual Basic is just a direct translation from C Sharp. You can go either way. So it is pretty, it's actually extremely similar to the code that I wrote in the C-sharp video. So if you want, you know, a detailed explanation of why each line exists, 
please watch that video. But right here, uh, some of the key similarities you'll notice is this connection string to the database. It's identical. And also down here with our pet IDs, or I guess the class for the pet is also identical. So what we need to do though to fix these red lines, first of all, our pet class isn't defined yet. So we'll need to, do, to define that class. And we also need our namespace for SQL clients. So the namespace, uh, you write imports, imports, and then system, oops, system dot data dot SQL clients like so and that'll fix those SQL connection errors and now we just need to define our pet class so to define the pet class we go to our project right click add new item search class and then we'll add this visual basic class and I will rename this as pet dot VB and click add so this is almost identical to the C-sharp code as well, just a few, you know, syntactical differences. But the, the names of these properties are the exact same as the variable names in the C-sharp code. So now that we have our pet class, that should have fixed the errors over here, and it did in our uh, ASPX.VB file. So now all that's left to do is work on the webform1.aspx, so the actual client-side interface. And this code is identical to the code in my previous video with the, the C-sharp detail. Everything except for this very top line, because this top line says the language is VB, and the code behind is in a VB file, not a C-sharp file, or a CS file. But if I just copy and paste everything from that previous video, except for that top line, just an identical one-to-one -one replica. And now when I run this, this program should work identical to how it did in C Sharp. So I'll run it and it will pop up in Google Chrome because that's my default browser. And now when I put in one, I should get Wrinkly. And I do, Wrinkly is a dog, age seven. Two is Michael and three would be Rocky. So at this point we do have a working program. It's an exact replica of the C-sharp program that I wrote but in Visual Basic rather than C-sharp. In case you were wondering how to take your SQL server from localhost to the internet, the documentation is provided by Microsoft on their website. What you'll do is called publish your database, your SQL server database. So you'll publish it to a web hosting provider, in particular an SQL server web hosting provider. So by publishing this database to a web hosting server provider, you can now access the database um, you know, from the internet rather than just as a local host. That does it for this video. If you would like to see the code that I've written in this video, you can find it on GitHub. I've made a repository and uploaded the code to the repository, and the link will be in the description down below. If you want to get in contact with me, if you have any suggestions or comments or questions about any of my videos or C Sharp in general, I encourage you to join my Discord server and if you enjoyed the content of this video, please like and subscribe so that I know that you support my channel. And as always, thank you for watching and stay safe everybody.